Peace, everyone. Welcome back once again to another critique video. I uh, had so much fun doing the previous one that I wanted to do another one really quick. So uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure you uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not, uh, and of course join the Facebook group. Links are in the description if, uh, if you want to submit one of your pieces uh, for one of these critiques or the monthly live critiques that I do then just make sure you join the Facebook group and also the Discord. All right, so for this project, I have a very, very lovely oil painting by John. And um, there's a lot correct about this painting. There's a tremendous amount correct, which is why I chose this one, because you want to be able to get to this stage. I think a majority of people would be very, very satisfied to be able to paint like this and uh, what what's going right what's going really really right about this painting which is why i wanted to do a critique of it is the precision of shape and color so real quick let me just show you what i'm talking about so when you're learning to do art Oftentimes people get caught up in the textures and the complexity of the changing values. A lot of people struggle with capturing correct values and they, they sort of get, they, they get tripped up on trying to, uh, to get the details. They're, they're, always, they're always most concerned about getting the details. They want to do something realistic and they, they bog themselves down into trying to capture the the small things and uh, this is a good example of leaving the small things behind and making sure that you have the shapes and the colors and the values correct so i'm going to pull out a few shapes so when when doing painting like similar to this or pretty much any project it doesn't necessarily have to be a painting of a dog or a painting at all it could be colored pencils it could be pastels it could be digital art it's it's about identifying the important shapes, translating them to your surface that you're working on, and then also making sure that your colors are accurate. So one of the sort of basic ways of doing it is capturing the dark values. So I'm going to uh, show you a few of the dark shapes. So we have this really nice dark shape that sort of defines the side of the dog you can see this shape here and if i take this shape and i bring it over to john's painting boom so john has translated that dark value shape it's basically just plain black there's nothing too special about the color of this shape but he's captured the shape that shape defines the whole side of the dog and when you have that shape, then you can start building around it. So uh, again, going back to another really prominent dark shape, like this one here that defines the chest, it's very, very sort of recognizable shape, fairly easy to see even at an intermediate level. And you want to train your eyes to, to see these shapes. Oh, that one's gonna end up moving. Hold on a second, let me. Yeah, I'll just double it. Okay, so I put this shape on John's painting, and we can see that he's captured that shape as well. Um, a little less accurate than the reference photo, but I tried rescaling the reference photo to his painting. It was just off a tiny bit. It could just be from the angle uh, that he took a picture of his reference photo. That It was only off by a very small margin. But you can see that, uh, again, this really important defining shape He's captured it uh, quite accurately, and I could do this for just about any shape. So if we if we have a look at the cast shadow from the dog's head here, we look at this shape here. This is another really important shape because this this tells us a lot about the dimensions of the form that he's creating. Because you have to remember that even though you, you see a dog. Um, really what we're looking at is an illusion. So here I might have to turn this one a little bit. 
but yeah, there we go. So I just had to turn it a little bit because like I said, uh, I couldn't line the reference photo up perfectly. But you, again, you can see the shape is fairly accurate. There's a little discrepancy right down here. It's slightly off just a tiny bit. But again, the importance is getting these shapes as closely as possible. Defining those, those dark areas is usually where you want to start. That sort of builds a really nice solid foundation for you to add some of your colors later on. And like I said, John has done this really, really well. And that's where you want to get. You want to get to that stage where you can identify the dark shapes and then copy them over to your work and then build off of them. So uh, building off of them would be the lighter areas. You know, you have the mid values that are in the middle and then you have the highlights or the lighter values. And we can see the color choice is also very good. So if I just color pick the back of this dog and it's, it's sort of a gray green and we have this hint of green coming from its surroundings. That's the thing with black fur, is that uh, it always sort of reflects a little bit of its surrounding color. And so if I take the back of uh, John's dog here, we can see, you know, I can get pretty close, pixel by pixel. I can get pretty close, pretty close to the actual color. And one thing to, to notice is that the value is really correct. The value is a little bit more, well, it's far more important actually. It's far more important than the actual color that you get. Um, so you can see that the, the overall value of the area, the lighter area is it's like spot on. It's spot on accurate. Um, the color is off, but that's fine because John also decided to change the background, which, um, I can agree with, I sort of like the flat background better than this busy bokeh background. But um, by taking out the green, you sort of neutralize the area. So that's actually a, a good choice. I'm not sure if he meant to do that consciously or not. But um, by removing the tone of green, you're, re you're removing the background also from the dog. So that's something that uh, is it, it's a bit more advanced, but it's something that you must consider when you change the background. And so we, we have very good accuracy in values, very good accuracy in shapes. And for the uh, orange part of the dog, uh, he has a little bit more yellow in his. So his his is a slightly more yellow orange, which again isn't a isn't a problem. It's just sort of a creative choice potentially. Um, or he was trying to match it perfectly and he just didn't get this spot as red because this spot down here looks pretty accurate to the reference. It's, uh, again, just just slightly off and that could have been purely because of the pixel that I happened to select there. So the, the colors on the orange part of the fur are very, very close, very well done. And again, we have just these shapes. So John has very well copied over the shapes of the different values and colors. And then he's, he's meticulously matched the values and really, really closely gotten the hue correct as well. So that's how he gets this painting to look so good is that he's copied over the shapes, he's copied over the values. And uh, there's not a lot of there, there's not a lot of correcting to do in this painting, which is another reason I wanted to choose it uh, to do this critique, because this is where, you know, you can get to this stage. If, if you really focus and uh, pay attention to just transferring the shapes and the colors, then you can get to this stage fairly quickly. You can, you could start painting like this as early as you know, six months, really, uh, from nothing. If you've never painted or done art in your entire life, if you put the time in, you can get to painting like this in six months. Um, and I'm not talking like you need, you need to practice like eight hours a day. I'm, I'm just saying that you, you know, you spend five or six hours a week and you could learn to do this in six months because this is, this is the most proficient way to sort of replicate a, a reference photo. You know, you're not going to become a master in six months, but 
you could learn to visualize the shapes and then copy those shapes and um, start painting like this fairly quickly. Now, where you want to go beyond, so like I said, just about anybody could do this in a, a fairly reasonable amount of time, but now you want to grow beyond it. Now you need, now you want to learn to add your creative flair to it, not just sort of this, uh, this sort of simple process of replication. You want, you want to learn to, to think outside the box a little bit, embellish your painting, make it your own. And this is where with, with fur in particular, fur has sort of been, uh, the topic for the past month, um, uh, with my own projects as well. So I'll, I'll talk about the, I guess it'd be like the third stage, uh, the third stage of doing fur. And I always call that the toning stage. And this is where I like to embellish the color of the fur. And this is where I think John could have brought a little bit more character into the dog. So I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm gonna grab this blue. So I'm gonna grab this blue here. And let's see, I'm gonna grab his orange and I'm going to turn his orange just a little bit more red. So this blue and this red. So I'm going to embellish the fur with these two colors just a little bit to, sh to show you how easy it is, how easy it can be to create some embellishment in your paintings and drawings and really just make them, make them uniquely your own. So I'm going to just come through the fur and everywhere there is a transition between a dark value and a light value, I'm just going to hit that edge with a little embellishment of this color. So I'm just going to bring in some blue right around where the black sort of starts to turn to gray. And I'll do this pretty much everywhere. So a little bit here. We'll do some on the face as well where the dark spots are. So, you know, when I zoom in here, you can see just the sort of the thick brush stroke of, of John's work. And that's just because he's defined the shapes so well that um, it still looks really close to the reference photo when you're viewing at a, at a normal distance because the shapes and the values and the colors are so accurate. So here's a, here's a little bit of embellishment with just the blue. So here's blue, here's without it, and here's with it. And you can see that I've just barely added anything but that's, that very subtle blue really just gives that fur sort of a, a new depth, a new color, and a new character as opposed to the, uh, the way it looks here. The way it looks here looks good. You know, no one's, no one's going to say otherwise. It, it looks good. But when you start to embellish it and create a little bit of, of, of diversity in, in the color, uh, you sort of start to see the fur take on a new characteristic. It's sort of a, a shinier, just it looks deeper. You know, the, the blue sort of gives a, a bit more depth to the fur, a um, bit more dynamics. Now I'm going to add some of the red. And same thing. So now what I'm going to do with the red is I'm going to add it to the transition between the the black fur and the orange. So I'll just I'll just start here. I'm just going to add a little bit of this red. Is this red working? Okay, yeah, it's just uh, really really low. Let me turn up the opacity a bit. Go oh, just a little bit higher. So I'm just going to add a little bit of red embellishment around the orange where the transition occurs a little bit maybe right here and right here a little bit on the eyebrows i think a little bit down here and this is probably going to be a little less noticeable than the blue because uh, the orange is already so bright and vibrant but I think at the end it will be noticeable. So here's, here's a little bit of embellishment with the red now. And you can see it sort of, it sort of 
brightens the fur. Like it, because I'm using such a saturated color, it doesn't take a lot of it to really sort of make the uh, the orange part of the fur feel a bit shinier as it as it transitions into the other colors. And that's another thing; it helps it transition a little bit smoother into the other parts of the fur. So here, here's the original, and then let me just group these together. Um, all right, so here's the original, and here's with just a little bit of uh, embellishment with blue and red. And you can see it just sort of makes the fur just a, a tiny bit shinier, a tiny bit deeper. Um, and just gives the dog a little bit more characteristic. And these colors, you know, I just chose blue and red because I thought they would look good. Uh, you could have went with a varying range of colors. Uh, for instance, let me just take the blue and I'll change the blue tone and we'll see it in real time. So here's here's more of a purple tone. And I think purple is kind of a fun color because it sort of complements the yellows in the... Uh, in the orange color. Um, here's a bit more of a green tone. You could, you know, you could argue that you're you're going for that teal orange sort of cinematic vibe. Um, here's like a really green. That this this green here would be what you see in the reference photo. Maybe not that saturated. Maybe if I tone the saturation down a little bit, but you can see with this green, see how the fur now matches because this green is the reflection of the background, the environment in the dog. So you're seeing this green uh, reflection from the surrounding area. And this is what helps set your dog into the scene. Actually, I kind of like the green more than the blue, even, even with the flat background. Uh, contextually, it doesn't really make as much sense because the there's no green environment. But I kind of like the green a lot. Um, Maybe it's just the way the green and the orange uh, are are interacting. Here's here's like a more yellow, and then here's a red. Red could be cool too. Yeah, here's like here's like a deeper red color for the fur, and I think red looks really cool too. Green and red both look really nice. Um, so, like I said, you can uh, you can choose whatever colors you want. And now I'm going to change the red. That we added. So here's the here's a more yellow. I don't think I think red is pretty much going to be the only color that works. Here's like a purple. That's kind of fun. That's like a, a fuchsia color. It really it kind of makes the dog look like uh, he's a little bit on fire. Here's really purple. So you can see that some colors don't work as good as others, but um, to some degree they still work. They just add like this strange flavor of uniqueness depending on which tones that you go with uh here's a green this one looks wild um here's like a teal color uh again these these colors don't really work um as well as just like a, a good old safe red but um yeah you can see how just these really really small changes in color tones make a big difference um and so I wanted to exemplify this uh, this potential to to immediately make your artwork just look better. You know, it's very small, uh, immediately makes it look better, and you don't really need any extra skill to do this because if you can already get to this point, uh, embellishing with a little bit of extra color in some areas, you know, is is not difficult at all. Now the other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about uh, was just the face. So anytime you're doing pets, and I mentioned this in the previous critique video, the eyes, nose, and ears are the most important feature um, to to capture likeness in an animal. And uh, here, the the eyes and nose just need a bit more detail. So uh, if you notice, the one thing that's missing uh, in the eyes on the painting. Uh, is the bottom eyelid. So we have this light tan color. So I'm just going to grab what he has on the nose here. And I'm just going to come in here. I'm not sure what scale this painting is. Maybe it was just a bit too small to, to be able to do this. But uh, the eyes are sort of missing this, this brighter area right here under them. 
And you can see now that we've sort of added that, the eyes look a little bit more accurately. The other thing is the shape of the eyebrow. So we have this dark fur and the eyebrow. You, you have this area here, but you sort of miss the mark on the top side of the eye a little bit. The top side of the eye uh, is a little bit um, too circular. It's, it needs to be more of like an almond shape. So something like that. Um, and then, so you see how this flares out like that. It sort of creates this, this triangle. Yours didn't flare out quite enough, and it's also a little bit too short. It goes up a little bit higher on both sides. It goes up just a little bit higher above the orange, above the orange. So something like that. Um, and then also don't be afraid don't be afraid of the highlights like get these highlights bright the highlights just feel a little bit too dull and because they're dull the eyes don't stick out as much and um they you sort of lose the eyes uh, because the highlights aren't aren't quite there and then uh let's take a little bit of this bright orange that you have and i'm going to use this in the eye i'm just going to add some bright orange give don't just make the irises don't don't just make the irises black um brighten them up with some color so you can see the way the eyes just sort of here they're sort of somber and you can't quite see the 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 shape of them the highlights are are, are toned down and when you look at the dog's face for me i'm looking at the nose because the the greatest uh, contrast difference is between the dark nostrils and the really bright orange fur. And so I end up looking right at the nose. But when you embellish the eyes a little bit, uh, even if it's not matching the reference photo perfectly, now I'm sort of drawn to the eyes and I'm not really looking at the nose as much. And so um, that's going to definitely help with your animals. Make sure make sure the eyes draw the most most attention because 99.9% .9 of the time you want your viewer to look into the animal's eyes you don't want them to like focus on their nose and speaking of their nose even the nose loses a little bit of the uh, shape here so uh, you have this line that that separates the nose um, and then you have these highlights underneath the nostrils that you need a little bit like that and i'm not going to try to capture it perfectly but um so you have the dark line i put a, I put a bright line my mistake so there's a dark line that that separates the, the the nostrils like this so you want to make sure you capture those textures um those little details in in something as important as the nose the nose is is, is very important so that looks a little bit better uh, the shape of the nose just a tiny bit too wide i'll just use a little bit of this orange to soften that edge a little bit um the nostrils themselves looks uh, look they look a little big i'm going to take this color and sort of see if i can just soften the edge this top edge is just a little bit too rough i don't want to do too much changing I just want to do like really, really mild changing to, to show you how small uh, of a change that you need. Uh, the lip, the lip looks good. You know, the lip looks good. It, it looks a little too uniform in the sense that it's sort of like this perfect slant where here it's sort of a, a it's not a perfect slant. If you can see the shape is just a little bit of a, uh, of a curve. uh let's see and then also the highlight yeah so i'll just grab white make sure you know where you have bright highlights don't be afraid to to use the bright highlights because the bright highlight on the nose is what makes it look shiny all right so that is going to do it for this project uh so let's have a look at the before so here's the before and most of these changes you could probably do really easily within a half hour maybe an hour at the most so the changes to really increase the quality of this painting uh, are very small and when you get to this stage here this is the hard part really uh when you get to when you're able to get to this stage 
adding you know the sprinkles on top to really make this painting uh, look great uh, is the easy part and it doesn't take too much time so here's with uh, just subtle embellishment in the fur uh, i changed the blue to green but uh, i, I kind of like the green um, and then with the small corrections to the face uh, in particular the eyes so just correcting a little bit of the eyes adding some nice brown orange color uh, to the irises just to give them some some translucency uh, with the highlight having that brighter color on the bottom sort of gives the eyes a brightness gives them the more uh, sort of translucent wet look to them and then also just small corrections on the nose like the little highlights underneath the nostrils and then the bright highlights so you want to reserve those really bright highlights for the the extra shiny parts of the nose to make the nose look wet um, you know dogs noses are often uh, often wet so they they have that nice glistening shine to them and with just those few corrections i think this elevates the painting um you know just one level higher at the very least um i didn't get i didn't get into uh too much of the um the texturing of the fur there's not really any texture that john painted in the fur uh, that's something that i sort of talked about in the previous critique and you could certainly do that so um one other thing you know there's there's some highlights in the fur that i i, I did intend on putting uh so this this highlight that runs through here you know, you, you want to make sure that you get these highlights in the fur because that's that's going to uh, really just make it. You know, it's going to it's going to capture that shine that the fur has. And so don't be afraid to to come back through and touch up some of these highlights in, in the fur. Uh, that's, you know, that's going to make make the fur just look better overall. Um, and you can do these highlights with a bit of texture. So instead of like just a flat brush like I'm using here, since I'm using a, a mouse and keyboard to do this, um, you can see that that adds like just a, another level of shine to the fur. Really makes the, the fur look good. Um, but yeah. Anyways, I hope that uh, this little critique here was helpful. Uh, if it was, you know, be sure to leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, also, uh, don't forget to sign up for the art club. Uh, you know, if you want to learn more from me, I have, I have over a hundred like full length real time tutorials in colored pencils and pastels, uh, all kinds of subjects from portraits to animals to landscapes. Uh, so anything you want to learn from me, I can assure you, you can learn it from me from my tutorials in the art club. Uh, I do live stream every Monday through Thursday uh, doing the art club uh, projects. So of course you can learn from me and ask me questions during the live stream. So just make sure you are subscribed and um, I will see you next time. Take care, peace.